Okay, um, I'll start the presentation now. As Colm said, any questions, um, feel free to write them into the public chat and I will come across, as I come across them, I will answer them. I suppose just before I start, uh, two years ago when I started in Wexford, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Um, I suppose I'd always been passionate with Wexford and been involved with Wexford teams and when I asked them to go into a full-time position, it, it's very different than sitting up in the stand and having an opinion. Very lucky to work for Leinster GA and under Colm, great to meet Colm, was very progressive. Shane Flanagan, James Devan, Alan Mulhall, they're extremely progressive and even this webinar tonight shows the level of progression that is taking place in Leinster GA and across the GA as a whole. So uh, we get going now on the slides as we start. So the format tonight that I will take is taken into three stages mainly. One is the critical age, the four to ten year old, to create the habit of hurling. Two, which would be the main body of it, which would be something that I established years ago in Wexford called Hurling 365, which is the club school link. And then we will talk about post-primary support as they get into their teams through the new hubs that are being run out throughout the country that are starting super game centres. And we'll have a summary where you guys are, are um, more than welcome to jump in as we go along. Um, so I will start off with how we create a habit. So... Every child that we come across that starts, comes up to the local GA pitch, four-year-old, helmet and toe, that's too big for their head, hurl being dragged along and mammy and daddy dropping them off. Each player that arrives is a, mur is a merger of three bodies. One, the player or the hurler. Two, the athlete. And three, the person. Often we as coaches only focus on one. We focus on the hurler. We forget about the athlete that has to be developed and we most, most of the time we also forget about the person that has to be developed. Um, I have a really strong belief, and I, and I would hope that this is um, you guys out there would, would have the same belief, is that the hurler is only one part of creating the player. We must focus on the whole person, whether it's a child, a senior inter-county player, a teenage player, the experience we create for the young child and the environment we surround them in. And this is very important, the experience and the environment that we surround our, our young player with, otherwise the habit will not be formed. Okay. So often, as I said, as coaches, we, we focus on the hurler. Do we focus on the athlete? Do we focus on the person? And there are things that we will discuss as we go along. I spoke about earlier about how I got into coaching through meeting a guy called Dave Billings. Well, the, Dave's biggest strength was he always looked after the person and he made you feel great about yourself. And I think any word that we've gone through in life, whether it's a, a teacher that you all remember or a coach that you all remember, somebody that's influenced you in life, it's not exactly what they've taught, taught you. It's... It's, the, it's how they've made you felt. It's how they've made you feel every day. You've left the pitch, left the classroom, left work. And I think that's the most important thing in creating the habit of a hurler and also engaging the child to stay with the program, stay with the pathway that's for them. Because you could have the best coach in the world, but if the, if the little child isn't leaving or the player isn't leaving a happy person, then they will not come back and the habit will not be formed. Okay? Slide four. So this is where we get into the nut and bolt, creating the habit. And we speak about the environment that I spoke in the last one. Just before I go into the, the environment we speak of, I'm an avid reader, I suppose, of sports books and kind of always finding out what different sports are down, whether it's, you know, American football to rugby to soccer to cricket, whatever it may be. But I'm sure a lot of you have come across a guy called Matthew Saeed. He actually does a podcast at the minute. Uh, with Freddie Flintoff and Robbie Savage on the BBC, and he's called The Ping Pong Man. But Matthew Saeed has, has wrote two award-winning books about creating a sports habit, uh, Black Box Thinking and Bounce. In both of these books, he, he and it goes back to where the main bolt of this PowerPoint is coming across, he speaks about a teacher called Peter Charters. So Matthew Saeed was from Reading in England, and Peter Charters was the local primary school teacher. In that one street of houses... They had 12 table tennis Olympians. So what he was trying to teach us is it's not always about talent. It's not always about um, picking up the sport and being excellent at it. It's about the people that coach you, and it's also about the environment they're surrounded in. How did 12 young children become Olympians from one road in Reading in England at table tennis? Because their local coach, Peter Charters, in the primary school, had influenced them so much and created the environment to create the habit 
that I suppose we looked in the GA tried to do. So the environment we tried to create in the GA, obviously the main one is our clubs. The club is always the bedrock of the GA and always will be the bedrock of the GA. Two is our schools, okay, and three is at home or social. Will the child pick up their horror, go poking out the back garden, out in the green, against the wall, at home every day? Does the exposure the child receives at a young age, the feeling we as coaches create towards hurling, and I go back to that word again, the feeling we create as coaches towards hurling for each child, regardless of ability, and this is massively important, regardless of ability. A four-year-old starting school or GA nursery is the same in every county. It's the pathway they go through that creates a habit, and I'd be very strong on that. We go further along and we speak about hurling. I suppose everybody tuning in here tonight is obviously obsessed by hurling. It's it's love. Yeah, have fun. Always do. In my view, uh, when it's played well, when it's coached well, when you see young children with a smile on their face, there's nothing like it. Okay. And I suppose another tutor of mine along the way, a good personal friend is Liam Griffin, and he coined a phrase down here in 96 about hurling being the river dance of sport, that there's no other game like it. And I think we've all seen that in the championships over the last two years in the new format. However, the one thing that we often forget is when we look at inter-county players, we see how talented they are and everything looks so easy to them. And we think this is the way hurling should be played. And it is. However, hurling is such a difficult sport to learn and especially to teach uh, to youngsters. There's three dimensions to it. In most sports, you have the player and the ball only. So you have the body and you have a ball, whether it's soccer, football, you know, handball, whatever it may be. And they are all difficult sports, don't get me wrong. But in the hurling, we have the third dimension of a hurl or a bat, as it is in other sports. Joey Carton, who is the game development manager for Munster GA, has, has a quote that if the child hasn't the basics when entering secondary school, it is nearly too late to develop them. And I would probably go a little bit more drastic on that. I would believe that if the child by 11 doesn't have the basics of hurling, it's actually nearly too late for them because they will find, obviously there's exceptions to this, but the, I suppose as a general rule of thumb, if by 11 years of age we haven't created the habit of hurling in the kids, in the players, it is nearly too late for them to develop further with it. Yes, they can play it, but they will struggle at it and they will probably give up at it because it gets much difficult, much faster, much more skillful as it goes into the teens years. So, uh, just just so that I'm, because I know I'm, there's no audience in front of me, can everyone give me a thumbs up if you're all following me and hearing me correctly so far? That's great. There's uh, loads of thumbs, come up, thumbs up there. So, as I said, don't be afraid to write in in the public chat if you have a question as we go along. But this is very much just the introduction at the start. So moving along uh, properly, so to, to the format, the main format, I suppose, the first one I said, the first chapter of tonight is the critical stage for a hurler, the ages of four to ten. A lot of people kind of look at me strangely when I give a presentation or when I speak to coaches and clubs and I say to them that the critical stage for a hurler is the four to ten year old age and, and they kind of look at you because they're focused on their teams or they're focused on their club senior team and they forget that if we don't have the foundation built, and if the basics of hurling aren't built in those in those primitive ages, it's actually too hard to um, it can be too difficult for the child to stay at. So creating the habit as a hurler must start very young, in my opinion. And again, I have no studied on this. It's only my personal opinion. Been in schools, been out around coaching in different counties in my own county. That in my opinion, the basic habits of hurling must be embedded in the child by nine or ten years of age, or the child will lose interest due to the difficulty of sport. Um, I don't know whether you guys agree with that, it's something we can have a discussion on at the end, but it's something that I would feel that when they're hitting 5th and 6th class, if they can't master the basics, now they don't have to be fantastic, but if they can't have the correct hand grip, if they can't swing correctly in both sides, if they haven't got to understand the ball hand, the hurl hand, if they're switching hands on the hurl, if they don't have the roll lift, the jab lift, the real basics of the hurl, of hurling, it's actually too late nearly by the time they come to 11 years of age, which is a scary as us as coaches and, and, and trainers and influencers, it's a scary thought to have. Uh, the exposure, and this is something I, I'm going to do a poll on. The exposure. The exposure must be all year round. You cannot learn hurling in a few months period and then put down the hurl for another four to seven month period. And I'll go on to hurling 365 as we go along. Can I just ask you guys, I'm going to set up a poll now. Uh, click yes if your club does this and click no if it doesn't. Does your club only 
coach kids from maybe March or April until September and October, and they might have no contact with their kid then from September, October to the following March. So type in yes if, uh, if, if your club kind of, you know, you don't see them again from October to March, and if your club does do winter stuff with them and keep them going, type no. And we'll just see the results of the poll. Okay, so 55% of you guys have said that uh, your club does keep them going over the winter, which is great to see. And just over, the, just under half of you then have said that no, but that half is still a scary thought that, you know, you can't lose contact with a child in October and let them put down the hurl and expect them then in March to be at the same level to advance to the next year, to the next player pathway. That hurling must go all year round, and that's why we come up with the term in Wexford. We use a, a new initiative, which I'll, which I'll discuss lots in this, which is Hurling 365, which obviously the name is in it. We want kids hurling 365 days of the school year, and, and, and I'll explain that as we go along. Uh, coaches must follow a clear hurling player pathway and not advance coaching too early. This is something that a lot of kids lose interest because the coach doesn't follow a pathway or can't maybe adapt to, to an age-appropriate coaching. So the coach might be in, say for example in my own county, the coach might be in Wexford Park on a Sunday and there could be 12,000 at it and Wexford play a league game and they see Davy Fitz and his team do a warm-up and they think, oh that's a great drill, I'll take that and I'll do it with my under nines. However, to the under nines, one, most of them aren't able to do it and two, there's no fun or enjoyment in it. It's a, it's a warm-up done for senior players on the league level to get them ready in an intense environment. And we think that's acceptable to coach children with at, an, at a younger age. And I think Leinster must be applauded, and I'll speak about it as we go along as well, with the new Taurus model. I'm sure all of you are aware of, of the Taurus model in Wexford, which is age-appropriate games-based coaching. So we do workshops for under 7s, 9s, 11s, the whole way up, that we try to get coaches in to train them up to how to be age-appropriate games-based coaching that the child will learn and will lo learn hurling and love coming back to because it's all age-appropriate, it's all fun and the player is learning along his uh, uh, his level. If I go on further, a child by the age of 10 must feel comfortable and confident with the hurl. If the child doesn't feel confident, when Mammy says to them at half five, come on, you're training at half six, get in the car, we're going up to the pitch, they will often say, ma'am, I don't want to go tonight because the confidence isn't with them, therefore the habit can't be created. A child must get 500 plus touches at every se session minimum. So, like, how, how much contact does a child get? Is, it one be is the ball, do they get a ball each at the start? Do they get a ball between two? Are they doing drill-based coaching? Are they doing, you know, one ball between five or six and they touch the ball maybe once every two minutes in a 60-minute session? That's 30 times, 40 times during the session which really isn't good enough to get them along the way. So if I actually just do another poll, if you don't mind, and just get the puppy chat back up a little, uh, and just ask you, have you all witnessed, or are you still witnessing coaching done with, say, the four to 10-year-old bracket in your local club or school where the child, you know, the, the matches could be 12 on 12 or 15 on 15 at the end, or the child could be in a group of maybe eight or nine or six in a line before they do a drill. So if I just do the poll, if you're still seeing this, click yes, and if not, say no. So how do I clear the last poll? Um, sorry, now it's bear with me. Now, you can just click yes if, you, if you're still witnessing this in your club, and click no if you're not still witnessing in your club. So, just the results are in again, they come in quick, so I don't know if you guys can see that, um, I can see them. So the result of the poll is 45% of you, actually 50% of you, half and half, 50% of you have said that you're still witnessing this in your club, and 50% of you are saying you're not. So that means we have a long way to go. We have maybe half the clubs doing a lot of games based, lots of touches, lots of fun games, and we still have a lot of them maybe back in how we were taught 20 years ago of lines, drills not many touches, you know, eight-year-old kids in a 
14 on 14 match at the end of training for 20 minutes so uh, kind of a, a worry is that but it's something that we must address and going forward um, if we move on children must leave each session wanting to come back and I spoke about the mum asking their child did I want to come up to training well the children must leave each session wanting to come back and again I go back to that term the feeling when they leave training do they love coming back to the club is the nursery warm for them is it fun is the under 7, 9, 11, 13, 15 squads is training of a high quality is it done well is the coach nice with them does the coach ask about their personal life do they know about how it's going on do they make them feel good about themselves do they have a laugh with them if they don't the child will not want to come back so each child, regardless of belief, must feel appreciated and welcome and create that sense of belonging. And something that I suppose we are very strong about in the GA is that we do, we're very proud of our parishes, our crests, our school. Uh, but so how is it done? And I suppose, as I said, the club. The club is the bedrock of the GA and it always will be of Irish society. We look at the numbers turned up the inter-county games, the club scene is in full swing now. However, what does it look like for a child? The child starting at four doesn't care about the club senior team. They don't care about, they don't understand it. They come up to a place and it's how that place makes her feel or him feel and what's the pathway look like for them. Does the club create the hurling habit? Okay, just do another quick poll, uh, if you don't mind. Do you know if your club has a clear personal club player pathway? Yes, if your club does and no, if your club doesn't. Right now, just one second. Now, so say, uh, no, your club doesn't have a player pathway, and yes, if your club does. Just waiting on one or two more. Okay. So we have over half of you, 55% of you, have said that your club has no player pathway. Okay. So when a coach takes over the nursery or a coach takes over the under 11s or the under 13s or the 14s in your club, they have no guidelines of what they should be doing. Of when are they passed on from the, the under 9 to under 11 in a pathway or is it just the coach makes it up as they go along? And that's something we need to get right if we want to create a hurling habit. As I said, it's such a difficult sport to play. Are we teaching them the right things at the right age? So, example, the nursery starts and the child will just look for the feeling in the club. Are you using small hurls, bean bags? Do they learn the hurl hand, the ball hand, the correct grip? You know, I use open the gate, close the gate with their hands, okay? So, all this sort of stuff. And I suppose the next one is an example used in Kilkenny at under 7 and 9 level. I don't know if any of you follow this, but it's uh, black and amber days, they call them. So every club receives a set of bibs, both black and amber. And when they organise their blitzes for under seven and under nine, they don't actually play with their club. So for example, if Dame Stevens are going to play in O'Loughlin's, they split the kids up in half. And on the team, if, if there's maybe six aside, three of them will be O'Loughlin's kids, three of them will be James Stevens kids, wearing a black bib. And on the other team, three O'Loughlin's and three James Stevens. Now the coaches don't focus on winning. It's not James Stevens versus O'Loughlin's anymore. It's the teams are mixed and the, folk, the coaches, the parents no longer care about winning. They're not screaming on the sideline. It's all about skill and skill development, creating the habit, letting the child learn how to, how to perfect and master the basics of hurling at a young age without the pressure of having to win in a fun way. And again, I go back to one of the first points I made. A four-year-old starting out doesn't have to be from Kilkenny City to be a brilliant hurler or be from Turner Sparsfields. For example, and we can look around the country Slot Neil, what has Slot Neil done in Derry to create the atmosphere of hurling? What is look at Shane Conway from Car from North Kerry, you know, Liz Nall. What has he done? How come he he is such a talented hurler, Fitzgibbon Cup winner, player of the Fitzgibbon from, from Kerry this year? So it's what their clubs did when they were young to create the, the environment and what they were doing right with them along the way. Because I firmly believe hurling is for everyone, not just in nine or ten counties that are particularly strong and, and competing with Liam McCarthy. It, it's, it should be open for every every county and if every county takes a bit from tonight and if you guys take one thing or two from tonight and bring it back to your club well that will be tonight achieved and it doesn't matter what county you're from I spoke about the Leinster G here so Leinster designed a program that has the technical ability the team play everything the skills it should be mastered at 7, 9, 
11, 13, 15 and 17. And do we follow the game, goal games model going back to the black and amber days? That are we focused on winning? Are we focused on developing players? As I said, are under eight still playing 15 aside? Crazy stuff. That especially Harlan because they need so many touches to master it. My belief, in it, and it comes from, I spent time with St. Vincent's in Dublin through Dave Binnings and Brian Mullins, and I met Mickey Whelan up there, and Mickey Whelan would firmly believe that all games and training for children to create the habit should be done whatever class they're in, plus one on a team. So if a boy is in first class, he is in year three of school, year three of school, plus one is four, he should play no more than four v four side of games. If he's playing eight on eight, nine on nine is too big. If he's in sixth class, he's in year eight, plus one is nine. So in training, the max game should be his nine on nine. Just moving on. So how can we do more than what the clubs are doing? Because I know there's fantastic work going on around Wexford, around every other county, and what the club scene is doing. And we can see that with the development of Kula, with the development of Slot Neil, with Liz Naws I spoke about. There's so much work, good work going on in every county. So how do we do more? How can we get the children hurling every day and how do we build that habit that the child is left, the hurl is left in the front? Sorry, some of you will, will probably aren't happy that I'm calling it hurl, but that's what we call it in Wexford. Some of you will call it hurly. So how is the hurl left inside the front door and grabbed the minute they leave the house every day? So in Wexford, we established this thing. You've probably seen it online and feel free to look on Twitter and Instagram. We have a Hurling365 program, which is the club school link. Uh, and we the aim of the Hurling365 was one to foster a love of, of hurling, but to allow our kids receive coaching all year round from the club coaches coming into their school because our primary schools are such a resource. We have all the children in the parish in the one building for five, six hours a day, five days of the week. How we wouldn't go in and coach in there and hopefully get more hurlers, bring them up to the club, is crazy. So we set up a club school link in, in Wexford Hurling 365 program. So what Hurling 365 does, it promotes and supports the coming together of our clubs and schools to provide weekly coaching to all primary school children in Wexford. So putting it bluntly, and I hope you don't my language, we wanted the Wexford clubs to get up off their asses, stop blaming everyone else, get into your local primary schools, whether it be one, two, three or four primary schools, and get people around the parish to coach all year round. And you might think, okay, this is this can't be achieved, but it has been achieved. And people thought I was mad when I did it, but now we have over 70 schools in Wexford partaking in the program. So the overall aim is to foster a love of hurling by allowing the children to master the basic skills of hurling in a relaxed and non-pressurized setting. There are no matches against the opposition, no competitive games. So the aim is to foster love, create a confidence in how to each child, each child to hurl, and to try to get children hurling all year round, 365 days being the ambition. How it works, it can't just be a three, six week program. We want to be 24 plus weeks of the school year. So the school year runs for 36 weeks of the year. We want it to run for, 20, we want 365, as I call it, Ireland 365, to run for 24 plus weeks of the school year. So we have the club and school working together to provide weekly hurling coaching to children. The club assists and provide volunteers to help coach children in the local primary school before or after school, and this is crucial. We want them to come in before or after school because the children who attend will be the children who want to play. It can be very demoralising and hard work for a club coach to go in and take out classes. And when you take out, it's great for a six-week block or eight-week block, but not for the year. If you take out maybe a class of 30, I would find an average six to ten of them will play with a GA club. The other 15 to 20, especially as they get older, will have little interest. Second class child to attend at 8.15 a.m. in the local hall and we'd run to just after 9 o'clock. On a Thursday then, at 8.15, we brought in the third six class kids. And all it was was skill-based training, fun games, games-based coaching with small mini-games at the end, teaching the kids how to hold the heart properly, how to learn how to strike the ball properly, and first touch, ground block, all the basics broken down over the week of the year. But the children who come before or after school are genuinely interested and then hopefully join the GA club and become a lifelong member. So I as a teacher volunteered, but I always had one or two club coaches coming to me. So in our parish, we had maybe 24 parents or club coaches that said, yeah, I'll help out with that because it'll only affect one morning before work. So 
because we had so many coaches, they only had to come maybe three, four, five times all the school year because they were done on a rota system. And if they missed it, they got another coach to take their place. So four hours out of your year to give to this program in your local school can make a massive difference. But the practicalities of setting it up, the club meeting with committed coaches, the more the better. I spoke about if you get 20 volunteers, and the more you get, a coach might only have to do one session every six weeks, which is not a lot to ask. You must establish a club school link officer, which would be the member with the teacher or the school on all matters to do with GA. When you're ready to set it up and you think you can get volunteers in to come before or after school, maybe once, twice a week, to get the kids out hurling all the week, all through the school year, you then meet the principal with the plan and the relevant bodies in the school. You discuss insurance, you discuss timetabling of it, you discuss the details of the gear. All gear and details are, 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 are provided by the club. Consent forms are then sent out through the classes and they're, and they're given back into the secretary. And now you must know, then you will know what children will be attending. You pick your time. So as I said, for me, it was Tuesday and Thursday at 8.15 a.m. And as I said, I was finished at 5 past 9, went into the staff room, got a cup of tea, down to my class, ready to go at 20 past 9. We pick and stick to dates and times and we don't change them. So for the first class boy or girl, they know every Tuesday I bring my hurling helmet to school because I have hurling on in school every Tuesday. It becomes part of their timetable, part of their rota. Okay. Um, just moving on. This is my own school, a picture taken from my own school. You can see it's a fairly dingy old parish hall, nothing special, radiators coming out of it. However, look at the numbers turning up from senior infants to second class. So this is about five past nine at the end of one session on a Tuesday and the numbers coming up. Now bear in mind we have only 130 kids in the school. So for half the school you're talking about 65 kids. So we're getting probably two thirds, maybe over a half of all the kids between senior infants and second class turning up to learn the basics of hurling, to create that habit in them that they hopefully maintain as they go along. So, and this is the case study I suppose. If you take the boy or girl who is in senior infants, so they're six years of age, they have seven years left in primary school. If they do, you know, they're not going to get all of them, but if they get to nearly 24 of the three, Harlan 365 sessions per year, over the course of the primary school, they will get an, an extra 168 sessions by the time they leave going to secondary school. If they've attended it well and coaching is done properly and the club support is good, surely then they will have the hurling habit got into them and all the basics of hurling mastered. The senior infants to third class, as I would say, the four to ten year olds or five to ten year olds are crucial. And I've gone back to my first point or the first chapter in this PowerPoint, the critical age and how to teach them at the hurl right. It's skill based. There's no pressure on ability. Holding the hurl correctly, first touch, striking, catch and tackling. And the beauty that kids love about 365 is we play games amongst ourselves, but we don't go off in any other schools at first class level or second class level. So there's no pressure to win. There's no pressure to compete against another team, to compete in their own environment, you know, non-pressurized, fun way. We work on the athlete through ABCs, RJTs, loads of fun games. Now, added this to another, in schools then, if you run lunchtime leagues, and we run lunchtime, we ran lunchtime leagues where first six class kids are all played together, where you have one child from each class, but they all had to stay in their own set corner of the pitch or section of the pitch, and they weren't allowed to leave it. So everyone got there was no going, there was not going to be bigger children and smaller children, and they love it as well. Because often in the schools and primary schools, we only focus on the coming and month school teams, maybe the fifth and sixth class teams, and we forget maybe that the senior infants, first class, second class, third class, to get very little GEA in the schools. So by the club getting in and working in their school, getting the twenty four sessions in per year, every, once a week. Okay, we can create that by the time they get to come in the month school, or as we call it, Wexford Record League. Mini sevens, the county coaches will come into the schools, club training, this is all extra to this. So we've got to ask ourselves, if we get all this right, if we get Harlan 365 right, if we get the lunchtime league set up, if we, are, if we have a, an active club school link officer come in the month school, mini sevens, county coach coming in, and they're all attending club, will, we, will the club get more numbers? Yes. Will it get more coaches from the parents? Yes. So will the child have the hurling habit by the time he or she is 12? Well, we can do very little more to this. So I said we give the initiative a brand name. So in Wexford, we gave it Hurling 365. So now it became something. And you will hear kids in Wexford talk about 365 training. 
Okay. Just before I move on to the workshops and rewards and stuff, I'm just going to do another little poll. And I just want to ask you, if you think this is achievable, Harlan365, click yes. If you don't think it's achievable in your club, click no, and we can discuss it at the end. That's still coming in here. So it's fantastic to see now that 81% of you guys, there's still one or two that haven't voted yet, it'll come in in a minute. 81% of you guys all think that you can create a club school link that can be strong and develop your club, your parish, the kids in your school. Okay? If I quickly, before moving on, I'm just going to do another poll. I'll, I'll just publish those first so you can see them. So we've 95% think it is achievable, 5% think it's not, which is a great response. And I just wrote another poll where I'm going to ask you, is there an active club schooling currently running in your school, something similar to Harlan 365 or at the level we're talking about? Just click, click yes if there is and no if there's not. Okay, so 52% of you have said that there is um, a club schooling, which is great to hear, and 38% of you have said there's not, so, well, it's actually because a few people haven't voted, they're still coming in, could be a little bit higher, but, you know, there's still maybe two-thirds of you that have no club school link, so you're, you just trust in what the school is doing with the kids, so your first-class boy could get no hurling from September to June in the school, bar what the club does, up in the club pitch. Okay, so just moving along, so how do we develop our coaches to make sure they're doing the right things? And I suppose last year, kind of, we ran a Harlan 365, uh, very much along the Taurus Leinster GA model, coaches to co coach to coaches workshops. So we wanted the coach to teachers to get upskilled along the Taurus model. Are they doing the age-appropriate stuff? Are they doing games-based stuff? So we ran it over two nights, one in North Wexford, one in South Wexford. And I couldn't believe the response. On the 31st of January, I remember it was Baltic, it was freezing, clubs hadn't gone back yet. 110 coaches turned up in Wexford that wanted to be upskilled to go into their school to coach the kids. And there's a picture of the room packed that night. 60, kids, 60 parents and, and teachers and club coaches turned up in South Wexford and Bano, which uh, as well. So we had over 170 coaches over the two nights. Now, you mightn't think 170 coaches, but one coach could be coaching 30 kids every year, every week. So if we had 100, that is massive numbers. That is thousands of kids getting coached every week by coaches that are, that, that are upskilling. And that worked really, really well. And your county your county coaching and games uh, staff will, will run this for you if your club goes to. Also, I would have spent an awful lot of nights going out to clubs one-on-one -on -one and doing coach-to-coaches workshops to help them set up 365. So all it takes is a phone call to your games uh, development office. They will assist you along the way. How do we engage the schools? So you've got to remember that your teachers here that have no interest in GEA, um, some are predominantly female that, that, that maybe don't feel confident in coaching hurling or camogie. We also have maybe a principal that's worried about insurance. So we've discussed all that beforehand in the practicalities of setting it up. So we rewarded the schools. So what we did is, for the schools that engaged in the program for over a year and a half, so just under two two full school years, and did it perfectly correctly, uh, we would we issued a Harlan three six five flag in the Wexford colours, and we had a big day where the county players would would attend and uh, present the school with with the flag and give talks and sign jerseys and give out prizes and stuff. This worked really well with the with the principals and the teachers. The one thing that teachers often and principals love. Is Harlan 365 doesn't interfere with class time. That the kids are before or after school, so there's no interference with their math really, really well. The teachers have commented on the alertness of children after doing it. We're promoting a healthy, active lifestyle. In Ireland at the minute, and I don't need to speak about it because you guys all know it, but we, you know, mental health is a problem, healthy lifestyle is a problem, obesity is a problem. 
this is creating children that it's normal to exercise early in the morning. It's normal to get up at half seven, have your breakfast, be up ready to go at eight o'clock in the morning. That this isn't strange, that they're not falling into the classroom with their eyes, sleep all over their eyes and after rushing to breakfast, barely getting in the door. It's a fantastic way to do it and it promotes that healthy, active lifestyle throughout the school year. Uh, one of the other things we did too to help the child and encourage them to practice at home and also the coaches, we developed the Hurling 365 skill booklet, which I'll come on to in, in, in a slide or two, to ch challenge them at home and act as a guide for the coach in planning their session. Again, we're talking about the pathway. And we also de um, developed stickers, certificates, prizes that were issued to all schools at the end of every year. Six, five. So, slide 17 is going to wait on me. No, there's some pictures from it from different schools. So, like, none of these are taken from the same school. I particularly love this one. Obviously, the kids are hugging to very young junior infants. This is in Clongee National School. So it's a parish with 90 kids go to the primary school. And that's the only school in the whole parish. And it's done wonders for them. They speak so highly of it. Uh, just get a marker. If you can see this one. It's a bit small. This one is taken in Screen National Schools via at one of the primary schools in the Shell Maliers GA Club in Wexford. This is their communion day last June. And if you look at the picture, every boy and girl in second class has a hurl with them on their communion day and in the fall. I just thought that was fantastic. I just thought, there's the habit made. So every boy eight and girl eight in screen who run 365. Actually, Kay Kelly runs it there, who has a four-time All-Ireland winner for Wexford Camogie and a nine-time All-Star. And she's she's just a parent there in the school, and she goes in on Tuesday mornings to run the 365 program in screen. And I just thought when I saw that and it was sent to me, that we're doing something right. And these are all pictures taken from, from other places. If I move on... Here as we talk about the flag, so this is one of the schools in Wexford, for Barrington who've actually do it. Barrington actually do it five mornings a week. Ireland three six five for the whole school year. One teacher volunteers one morning and one club coach. So they've always two there. And the caretaker opens up and is a member of the club. And here we have the Wexford captain Macho Allen and Mark Fanning at the goalkeeper and from the area presenting the flag, which they made a huge day of it. Everyone in a Wexford jersey or Glen Barrington jersey. Uh, hurl signed, everything like that. So it's just a little reward, and that flies now in front of the school. And if you're driving through Wexford, I hope you do drive through some primary schools in the villages, and you see that flag flying out as proud as the green, green, um, the green flag that flies outside the school. The skills booklets is the next part of three six five that I spoke about earlier. So we have one skill booklet where the child gets it each to keep, where they write their name on it, their age, and their class, and in it it's broken into three stages. So it's 20 skills for the beginner, so the four to seven year old, 20 skills in the middle of the book for the seven to 10 year old the intermediate, maybe your first third class child, and then the senior book for maybe fourth to sixth class child, you're coming to month school players, they're all challenging as well. So all the, all the player has to do is go to his challenge, and each week they will have a challenge inside it that they have to master, and it can be signed by the parent or the coach at the bottom, and they keep it in their school bag and bring it to school with them. Um, one of the things we started last year, uh, I'm sure you've probably seen them on it, just give me a thumbs up if you've seen these skills videos online through Wexford GA, Twitter or Facebook. Just give me a thumbs up. Okay. So what we did last year in Wexford was, I suppose I, um, every year you're trying to improve it, you're trying to get schools to buy into it more, you're trying to get kids to buy into it more, and one to do it is, I suppose, we're lucky enough at minute to have a high profile senior team in Wexford, and I got eight of the players, Mark is actually there, he's, he's actually Mr. Mark Fanning, into an arena for three, mo three hours one morning, that's all I asked, and we had videographers there, and we took, we, we designed 40 skills that children would love competing with the county players in. And the count, three county players or two county players took part in each skill. And then we released them into video. So the only role list can you do in 30 seconds. So we had two of the county players doing the role list. I think it was Matthew and D, D O'Keefe. And then the kid had to go off and try and beat their score. These videos were posted on Twitter, on Instagram, on the Wexford Facebook page, the official Wexford GA Facebook page. But on top of that as well, I emailed them to every teacher in the county. That's the GA, the GA link. 
and they were they were allowed to show their encouraged to show all the children then at home. But that was a it was just another way of engaging. At the minute, we've released about ten of them. We've another target to release. There are some of them as a bin challenge. Or they have to try and hit it into a bin. Some of them is basics like line balls, rollers. Some of them is against the wall. Some of them is ground strokes. And if you just follow our, our social media pages, uh, as they're here for you, uh, uh, if you follow them online, you will see them being updated as the year goes on. Uh, and it was a real catch because once you leech in talking to you, saying, can you beat me in sideline cuts, the child will love to go up to the pitch and say, well, leech in got this or did this, and I'm going to try and beat him now. I also got the players to retweet and use it on their social media because some of them have, like I said, Lee has 40,000 followers and Conor Mack has 15,000 followers and the players are only happy to engage. They, they love doing it and there was no issue with them doing it. Um, so that's really 365. Uh, I'll finish up and I'll quickly move along to where they go next after primary school. But I think if you have a Hurling 365 club school link set up, if you have your club running a proper player pathway program that's followed by a club policy, you're a long way along creating a habit. Um, now, so sometimes we forget then when you go to post-primary school. Okay? When they go to secondary school, what happens to them? So in Wexford, we've, we've two of them compete in Leinster A colleges, we've four schools compete in Leinster B colleges, and we've a, lot, we've a lot then at C and D and stuff. So. How do we target the kid that goes from post-primary to post-primary to keep the habit going from 12 to 18 or 19? So you need to contact your, your club as well, you need to push your, your coaching and games team to target your second level schools and offer support to your county coaching and games team. The teachers need to, will, will only look for it if they're off, like we did with the 365 one. Help organise first, second year leagues that all players are taking part in. So for example, in, in Wexford, for example, we have St. Peter's College. So in Tipperary, they could be the equivalent of Thurlis CBS. In Cork, it could be, you know, CBC. In Dublin, it could be Art School Reach. You know, your main, one of your main GA playing schools. However, they have four teams. They have a first-year team, a second-year team, a junior team, under 16 team, that is, and a senior team. Players, maybe 20 in each panel getting game time. That's only 80 players. Over 10 years, that's only 800 players in that school getting GA. If you can run second Wexford competitions, inter you know, Dublin are good at that, they run county competitions. But if you can run second team competitions, if you can get in and coach and run super game blitzes or hubs, which I'll speak about now, you can up that number to imagine you get 34 playing in each year in school. So if you got 40 in each year playing Harlan every year, that's two over ten years now you're up to two thousand four hundred. So go from eight hundred to two thousand four hundred kids getting regular. Harlan coaching within the secondary school base. Uh, I'm just going to do a poll. Would you find that your regular, your average club player would maybe not play very often for their set for their post primary school in comparison to what they did with the club and their secondary school? So click yes if you find that there's a kind of a drop off of players playing, not not maybe from the club, but playing in their secondary school, and know if they if a lot of your players are getting game time in their school. Okay, so if you look at that, 76% of you said there is a drop-off in secondary school that maybe the wing-back on your club team, so I'll use Colin Clare, who's hosting it tonight. Colin is a member of Port Leash GA Club. So Colin could have a really good wing-back on his under-14 Port Leash team. He goes into secondary school, and because the, the, the clubs are all going together from that area into Port Leash CBS, then... He mightn't be good enough to make his team, and therefore he has no hurling in the school for the year. But how do we get them playing more lunchtime leagues, more coaching done throughout the year? And I'm going to get on to these now. So we're starting now, and it's probably becoming more super game centres. So a super game centre is kind of a fancy word for free coaching. So on Friday evenings in Wexford now, starting this school year, we're going to invite any kid in first and second year who wants to train on Friday after school to come and get a training session in with a qualified coach. 
the, and we're doing it in our six main GA schools. So you don't have to be on the Go Council first year team. You can if you don't, if you if you, if you are, but you don't have to. You could be not even making that panel, and you're welcome to come to get an hour of coaching of games based fun coaching that they're going to get now in first and second year to keep them hurling. Hopefully, then later in the year we'll get up to the third and fourth year age group, and the TYs. TY is a bit easier because they're more free time. Primary. As I said, that's only 80 players in the whole school. Try and focus on the 240 players that want to play. And you can do that by putting on free Super Game Centre sessions every Friday, 3 30. A, a, a member of the coaching and games team will be there to train whoever wants to turn up. Why not? Very easily done. Do you think that's achievable if you approached your um, county uh, coaching and games team? Again, click yes if you think it is achievable. Click no if you don't. Okay, I'll just publish them because we'll move along because I know we're on 47 minutes now so I don't want to keep you here all night. Achievable and 30%, you just under 30 said it's probably not achievable. Okay, and that, that's due to every school or every county's different. The, the numbers that you have on your coaching and game teams of school, the openness of the school, uh, the school system that runs in your in your uh, county. So one of the last things I'll speak about is, and I'm sure some of you have heard about it, is the Brian Cuthbert hub system. Where they're trying to, Brian Cuthbert has done a study, he's done a doctorate in talent development and how we look after our teens, so our 13 to maybe 18 year olds, um, and how we create continue the habit that has been created there in the teen years. Because I suppose it's traditional in each county to get a development squad together and get 40 to 50 players together at under 14, have two squads of 20, 24 players, and we focus on them for the next three years uh, until you get to a minor team. So what Brian Cuthbert has done is there has to be a better way of doing this, and he set up a new hub system, which we've all seen in Cork this year, and we're actually starting in Wexford now. What they've done in Cork, they've done geographically, uh, and I'll speak about Armagh as well in a second, but what Cork have done is they've done it geographically, and they've set up eight under-14 hub teams. So there's no longer a Cork team, and they didn't enter this year in the Tony Forrestal. They didn't enter um, in the Sunny Welsh, which they've dominated in the last few years. And they had a Cork Day then on the 31st of August where the eight teams played off and they had a qualification process like the Celtic Challenge where they kept uh, 240 players at county level playing throughout the summer instead of the traditional 48 players. Okay, that's going to take a bit of, there will be challenges with that in terms of sometimes when you get more quantity it's hard to get the coaches and therefore the quality can drop. But that's the model that they're going for and it's probably going to become a, a national norm in the next five to ten years. Um, so it's something that you should inquire about for your club players because one club player might make it a county squad but you could have six to ten on it as the club to self-esteem of those players and they get more contact, more training at an elite level. So next year we're doing it Wexford through the, through the school system so we're going to base it in our four main towns, Gorey, Enniscorty, New Ross and Wexford and we're going to invite uh, the four schools or five schools attached to each town to send players in every Saturday morning for an hour and a half of hub training at under 13, under 14 level. So we hope to have 140, 160 kids at under 14 level now being trained for 8, 10 months at county, you know, by the coaching the game teams, by the volunteers, no longer 48. So we're going to up our numbers by 90 to 100 players at that age. We can only make sense and can help the habit going back to the clubs and back to the schools. Um, I suppose I'm just going to summarise it now. We'll move on. You can ask questions at the end. So, I suppose it's a great picture to put in, guess where? There's a school that are going to their school. I'll just go on there, Carl. Correct. St. Cairns. Yeah. So, Shea, I see Shay has it. Liam has it. Well, Liam Bally held it. Not uh, Gary has it. Noel has it. Carl has St. Cairns. So, it's outside St. Cairns. Okay. And that's the culture or the habit that's created in Kilkenny towards going to the school. It's cool to bring your heart to school. It's cool to do that. I firmly believe, and I'll summarise it on this, create the hurling habit, the first of all, you must foster a love. If the child between four and ten doesn't have a love of hurling through the coach and through the exposure in schools and clubs, 
they will not stay at it. It has to be fun, it has to be games based, it has to be small sided games. Trainers have to upskill, create that love for the term I used, the feeling the child has about hurling, about their club, about their school. We must give each child the confidence in how to hurl. Teach them the skills of the game in the four to ten years is critical. The children will quit if they feel it's too hard or they are not good at it. Simple as that. It's like ending in life. If the child turns up, and I go back to the third dimension, the player, the ball, and the hurl. In other sports, it's just the player and the ball, so they can pick it up at any time, they can put it down at any time. In hurling, you can't do that. Exposure. Proper welcome and club structure that follows the Go Games ethos, a player pathway, as well as educating and upskilling coaches regularly through the Taurus pathway. If you don't know that pathway, I'd recommend you Google it or contact Colm after this and how you, how, or myself on how you find out about it. Create a club school link. Allow children in primary and secondary school learn the skills of the game all year round through the 365, the hub system, the super game centres. Make the hurl as important as the school. Um, that's me finished. I'd just like to thank everybody for taking the time on a Monday night to tune in. It's a, it's a new way of communicating through Leinster G. I think they should be applauded for how they're trying to get out to coaches. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to hand you back over to Colm now for a second. And if there's any questions you want to type in, please feel free to do so. And if you have any other queries, you can email Colm and he can send you on information or you can contact me direct as well. So thank you. Thanks, Willie. Um, I just want to first of all thank Willie for his contribution there this evening. Um, I think it's been fantastic. And um, I suppose I just want to compliment Willie and the lads. They're doing tremendous work down in Wexford. And I know a lot of what we've talked about this evening and, and with we've been giving examples of it from a, from a county perspective. But the reason why we wanted to get Willie this evening to talk is I think you can see the amount of stuff that they've tried at that level, even in their own pockets, in their own regions. Um, and I think it's fantastic to learn from him. So I just want to compliment Willie again and thank him for his contributions. And again, I'd like to compliment all the lads in Wexford and the tremendous work they're doing in, in promoting such programs. So again, guys, um, I see there's a good few people typing there. If there's any questions, um, just before we finish up, we'll just give it a minute or two. The other thing, just while lads are um, are putting out questions, that we see again in the next day or so, we'll just get it up to YouTube and we'll... Uh, We'll get it shared if you want to reflect back on it. We'll get the presentation. I have your email address, so I'll be able to send that out as a PDF as well, so you've got it as a, a reference point. Um, the question I here... I see one question in there, Paul. Yeah, yeah perfect. So if you want to reply. Yeah, I just see Paul ask, is this being run by Wexford GAA? And she started something similar. I think it's Come On, Let's Play in Kildare. But it's yeah. actually... It's, it's not really a Wexford GAA initiative. It's, it's more so the club's initiative in the club. So, for example, we don't give county coach support to 365 in the clubs. The club must have its volunteers itself to go in with the teachers if the teachers are willing to volunteer and do it. But really, it needs no support from the county board or to make it work. Obviously, it will help massively and it can help out through coaching the coach at half eight in the morning on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. As I said, there's 70 schools in Wexford. Doing it. If I get around to them once in the school year, I'm doing well. So it's really been run by the clubs and the clubs, I will help them set it up but after that it's up for the club to run it year in, year out. Okay. Perfect. Uh, we have a question there from Barry Dunn as well, Willie. Um, it's, was there any part of Hurling 365 that didn't take off as you thought it might? Something you had to tweak? Um, um, part of 365. I suppose the one thing you need to reassure the, the, the school because sometimes the school have a lack of confidence in the GA at times that they don't want them coming to their door, promising something and letting it fail. In one or two schools, gone on to post primary school, and those parents who were staunch GA people in the parish had stopped going in and doing it, and it might have fell down that way. But you need a constant, um, you need a constant flow of parents and club coaches that are willing to do it, and when when, when a child leaves. And their parent might leave with them. You need new parents to come on board to do it. That was probably the main reason. And sometimes it fell down uh, for maybe one year uh, in that way. Now, me being full-time in the position has helped that a lot because I can keep the monitor on it a bit more. When I was teaching, it was much harder for taking me out of classroom and giving me a job. But um, but uh, that that's really it, Barry. Perfect. There's another question there from Gary Moore, which probably ties in nicely. 
it was what was the best way to get more buy-in from coaches to further educate themselves he said it's hard to get buy-in from coaches most of the time and um, what i found barry one is doing it regional so keeping the coach and the coaches workshops to the club or in there close by that they don't have to travel if one area to look at it two i can just talk from a length of ga point of view the tourist workshops that i've been running have been a massive success with the coaches some coaches have their foundation level one, level two done, which is fantastic. However, some don't, and they might want an informal coach education night. And by having a one-off night where you're there for two hours learning only about the under nine, if you're the under nine coach, how to coach for under nines, loads of different games you show them how to do for under nines, you give them out the cards from the, from Leinster GA, they often, there was a major buy-in, and this buy-in, using social media then and wait for GA to, to advertise it, from Leinster GA to advertise it. We got huge buy-in then to all these. And once something gets a good name, it follows on success. So, for example, I ran an under-11 one, I think, this year, and I had, I think I had, you know, 50 at it. And then I ran an under-13 one and had 54 at it. And that was only in a segment of Wexford, which was, you know, beyond our, our wildest uh, dreams, to be honest. We thought we might get 15 to 20 at it, which would be great. So I think word of mouth then spread that these tourist workshops were great. And when the coaches got into that, they got confident. And then we sent a lot of them on to foundations, level ones. And some were actually beginning their level two now in the winter. So that, that's kind of how it snowballed. I think if, if you don't mind me coming in there, Willie, one of yeah. the things I thought was excellent was, was sometimes with volunteers, and you looked at this club schooling, we spoke about it, it's, it's the, the requirement. The fact it might only be one or two you know, or three or four sessions in the year they have to do because if you get enough engaged, it lightens the load on everybody. Um, and I suppose that's the hard work to begin with. But when that's there and there's a large group, it can be easier to get people to buy in and it becomes a bit of a community in the club. So maybe having a clear structure around the role and exactly what you're committing to can help encourage others to get involved. Yeah. Be a way of looking at it. We have another question there from Paul. He was asked one earlier, but in this term he's looking for, in relation to the flags, booklets, etc., where are they available? Okay. <laughs> uh, Paul, they were, what, what happened was, um, Wexford GA gave me a small contingency, very small, didn't cost a whole lot. The flags are 20 euro a flag, and I just got them off a, a website. Uh, the flag man, Mark, was great to deal with, and literally I just ordered them, and it was taken from that. So, like, as I mean, if 40 schools got them, it's only 800 euro. It's not a major thing. The booklets then were um, again, there was an investment from Wexford GA and has been a huge success from coaches and the kids that the booklets, uh, surprisingly, actually, the uptake on it and the interest in them, uh, in that. So, um, Paul or uh, Willie, do you think we could be in a position to share maybe PDFs of those booklets? Yeah, I have, to, I have the booklets, so I can share them with you, Colin, and then you can share with the lads who have logged in tonight. I'll put them out to you guys in relation to maybe a soft copy for your own setting or your own club. Maybe put in your own logos, etc. Club logos, etc. Um, we have another question here from Lee. Uh, knows the parts of the basics for four to ten year olds. But what are your thoughts on the basic skills we tend to assume kids have, i.e., running, jumping, skipping? Um, great question, Lee. And if you go back to one of my first slides, I just go quickly back up there to show you. Uh, I think one of the first things I said was the hurler, the athlete, and the person. Leave leaving it, but the athlete and the hurler are combined. You need to set up, you can't assume that they're able to run, jump, skip, hop. You have to incorporate in your fun games, in your stations, that they're doing an athletic kind of base station unbeknown to them. So, for example, if you're teaching them leg strength and, and hopping, when you're doing your warm-up, do frog jumps, do bunny hops, do one-legged hops. Uh, they love all this. Um, joke at it, and it's very much with the ball as well. So... You have to incorporate that. I would be a big advocate of station coaching up till, well, all ages in a way, but up to, definitely up to under 11, where you'd have three stations. You would have the skill station for the night, so what your technical aim is for the night, so it could be the ground stroke. Your athletic station, which could be, you know, ladders, hopping, jumping, fun games, all as you're talking, the ABCs, the RJTs. And then if you had 30 turning up, 10 of them would be doing the technical station. 10 of them would be doing the athletic station and 10 of them would be doing the match. And every 15 to 20 minutes, they would rotate until the hour is over. And it's small-sided, it's fun, and all the three coaches have to do coming is no one station. 
So one coach takes the technical, one coach takes the athletic, as you're talking about, uh, and it's ball based as well. It's a slitter based, and then the three, then and then the other uh, takes the mini match, five on five or four on four. Excellent. Um, Colin Codd here is another question, I suppose, which might be pertinent for for different areas or different clubs. Are there schools in Wexford where there are more than one club represented in a school? So do you get parents from different clubs to work together? Yeah, um, that's a great question, Colin. Uh, yeah, most most we very few clubs that would only have one school. Most would have two. Uh, some would have three in their larger town areas would have, you know, four to five maybe schools attached. Um, yeah, we do. Um, so say for the rural parish that maybe the two schools are attached. One, you look for the parents in those schools to work in their individual schools. So for example, in Wexford, say we have Ewler to Balak. So we would have the parents and, you know, the club coaches in Ewler would look, kind of look after the other 365 and then the Balak coaches would look after the Balak, the parents from the Balak, along with the teachers and the club. Often then we would advise the over to Ewler to help out, and likewise, vice versa. So that kind of works well in there. In When the school is not targeted with um, kind of a club, what we have, we kind of assign, well, we have the GPO model now in Wexford as well, which is great, especially in our large urban areas, so the game promotion officers. But if we don't have that, we recommend maybe one coach, and it has happened before, it happens in Wexford Town, we have the fight Harriers in Clark, where one coach to the, to the school to decide. And that has worked well, but that was something we did have to solve, Colin, yeah. Very good. Um, I think... We have one or two more just to yeah. hear, and uh, I think some great insight as well to be able to process down the video and we'll share it with you then and the other resource then is we'll we'll get that soft copy that we, we sort of guilted Willie into giving us um, he, we I'll we'll give it on to anyone for the Kenny or Tim <laughs> <laughs> perfect I think sorry uh, uh, Brian has been yeah the initial meeting with parents and teachers is probably most important what was the best communication method to entice them to come um, okay, so what we did is first, first it, it comes from the club, so the club have to have a band or a body of volunteers willing to do it, otherwise it just won't work. So if you have your, ba your, your, your body of volunteers that are willing to give it up, so one coach might say, I may be able to go every Tuesday, the club organises a club meet, and we have your 16 to 10 to 20 club coaches willing to do it and willing to take part. That Then we have formalise a meeting with the principal. We explain our reasoning behind it. We explain how it's going to work, how it's going to be no, no, it's going to have no pressure on teachers if they don't want to, no pressure on class time, anything like that. And generally, I would have found in all of the schools in Wexford, the principals think it's a great initiative, well policy. So they they kind of love they love it as long as the insurance is is cared for and the gear is cared for. And once the club can promise that and is reliable, that the school is I have found has been excellent to go with that. So once you have that set up then, you send out your flyers to your parents. If you have to hold an information night, you can. It's not really necessary once they have the flyer and, and they sign 